Hello everyone, back here with another live for um, talking about the habits of an excellent learner and just kind of review a little bit of what we've done over the past two days. Uh, Monday, we, start, uh, we started talking about uh, prepare and how to prepare your schedule, your week, your daily activities. We had a great resource from the Lewandowski family that showed us their daily schedule, um, everything that they were doing. And then we jumped into yesterday doing uh, get in state and talking about physical, mental, and emotional. And what I realized from there is that um, a lot of what we're doing right now, we're in some times that are a little bit more difficult than what we're used to. I, I checked in with some of my, my teacher friends back home, uh, checking in with some of our facilitators that are also educators. And I think there's a common misconception going around that I just wanna hit real quick, is people are thinking that teachers aren't um, are kind of taking taking some time off for themselves and what I found out is it's the exact opposite is teachers are also getting together uh, learning from each other how can we get resources for our students to make sure that they're getting the most that they possibly can so um, today is all about priming your mind and you, you notice next to me we have this big cluster chart now the cluster is a great tool to utilize to prime your mind on how can we address the positive situations that could come from the scenario that we're in with this uh, social distancing? Um, what are things that we could do as parents, as educators, as students to, to learn how to navigate this world of e-learning? And, and it's different from most people. Most people um, were used to this face-to-face -face social interaction. And now we have to switch or code switch into this digital format, this digital world. So one way that we could do that is clustering. And I apologize ahead of time. The writing on here is gonna be backwards. It's okay, it's just the way the phone is. Uh, utilize yours for what you can utilize yours. I always select three colors. Three or four colors, no more. And that's a key, key uh, strategy to use. The more colors you put in, and I've seen some people do this before, they have their whole cup of markers and they wanna use everything. And what happens in your brain is your brain can't focus anymore. So three to four colors on any cluster, any mind map, even when you're altering your notes, three to four colors is gonna help you. Now, if you use it purposefully, you can then prime your mind for each topic that you're talking about. An example would be this. Um, if we're talking about math class, so maybe math for me, I'm gonna use blue. And in the center I have math, I'm also gonna circle that with blue because then it reminds me every time I prime my mind when I see blue I'm only focusing in on math class and then what are the, the the days of the week or the things that I need to get done during that time maybe day one is is Monday and I have my hours from 9 to 10 is what I'm going to focus in on Monday I'm priming my brain what did I do Monday or what do I want to do Monday and you put your topics that are associated with each one of these here so a topic associated for Monday, I was a geometry teacher, so maybe we're talking about uh, right triangles. Also draw pictures, it helps to prime your mind. This is a triangle, if I wanted to draw a right triangle, I would do that. If I wanted to switch out, and we could keep clustering and clustering and clustering, when you cluster, you're making associations to that one thing. If I wanted to go back to the main topic of math, then I would go into maybe Tuesday was a different topic. Maybe I'm reviewing content that's a different thing. Um, for Tuesday, again, 9 to 10, what's something else that I can review? Maybe it's equations. And something like x plus 2 uh, equals 12. That's a quick equation I can put on there. Obviously, varying on your ability level and what you're doing, that would, that would sign up differently there. So Monday, everything in math is blue. Tuesday, math is still blue. Everything is blue. It's priming my mind to make sure I'm focused. Whenever I see blue, it's purposeful. I'm going to utilize it. Then I move on to another uh, subject. Maybe this is science. You do this same thing over and over. What are some associations? Monday, maybe it is uh, 10, 10 to 11. 
What are the different things that you can then associate? Maybe it's lab work. Maybe it's something else. What lab are you doing? Then you draw an association to that. Maybe I'm, I'm filling out different chemicals, different, um, uh, maybe I'm in chemistry, so I'm doing different things inside of that, different um, equations that I could use with that. So maybe what chemicals am I working on? What are the, what are the things I'm breaking down? I'm priming my, brain, priming my brain. Anytime I see red, it's science. Every time I see blue, it's math. Every time I see a different color, it's that next color. So that's one strategy. Map it all out for uh, parents, for teachers at home. What are things that you can do to prime your mind about other things that are happening? Maybe one of those things that you do is a completely different uh, topic. Maybe you go here and it's e-learning. And then map out all of your maybe challenges, maybe questions, maybe solutions. And then you just prime your brain. It's what I call it here, it's, it's my brain dumping information onto the page. And I go ahead and I just keep clustering. What are some challenges? Some challenges that I'm seeing from parents today are from parents today is what do I do? And even though it's a question, that's still a challenge for them. And then create solutions for that. So that's just one strategy that you can utilize in priming your brain. Another one is PBS currently right now is offering free resources for educators, free resources for students, and they have tons of videos around different um, subjects where you can prime your brain on something, even with your notes, so you have your notes ready in front of you, you have your playbook for those that have gone to camp before or whatever your notes are, you have everything in front of you, you go click on PBS, you look at your, uh, your grade level, you look at some of the subjects, and you filter through, prime your brain on what's going to be happening there. Um, a great thing that came up the other day, uh, Daniel Drew, he is a super camp facilitator, but he is also a science teacher in Escondido. And what he did is he primed the teacher's brains, or he primed the, uh, the parents' brains of what to expect during this time of distance learning. So he sent out strategies. First, it's okay, we're here. We're with you, we got it. And the second one is, here are some other resources you can utilize. I see a lot of teachers out there posting things about, hey, if you need help, if you need support, um, come email me, uh, message me, all those things. Feel free to do that. Prime your brain with the resources and the people around you. One other thing, and it's not about priming your brain, but it's just about you being you. Remember, take a deep breath in, let it out. And everything that you're doing right now is enough. Everything you're doing right now is good. It's working. It's something that's completely new for everybody. It's not just you. We were just on a call with a bunch of uh, other camp organizations and we were having conversations around what's happening with camp. And camp is happening. We know it. Camp's going to happen. But it's just good to have a conversation with the people around us around what that is. So continue to reach out to the positive people in your life. Keep that positive message going.